It's always said that when Queen Victoria travelled through the black country on the royal train, she insisted on having the window blinds pulled down. Britain's romance with industry was coming to an end. It had transformed the way people lived and worked, and even children were sucked into the factory system. 200 years ago, here on the Dudley Road outside Wolverhampton, there stood a factory that made Doll's House furniture. It was owned by a wealthy black country businessman, Sidney Cartwright, and his workforce was mainly young children. In 1834, he was paid a visit by a government inspector. This is the inspector's account. John Mosley, aged nearly 12. A poor little creature for his age, all in rags, unhealthy, unhappy. Daniel Ford, aged 10 or 11, doesn't know what month of the year it is, has never heard of a snowdrop or crocus. Mary Perry, aged 10, feels very tired at night, a poor, sickly little thing. Cartwright amassed a fortune through his use of child labor, and he spent his money building up an art collection. When he died in 1883, 200 of his paintings were given to Wolverhampton's art gallery. Cartwright wasn't interested in pictures of industry. He saw enough of that every day. What he liked were sentimental scenes of rural life. And as the monster of industry grew, most Victorians came to share his taste. One of the pictures Cartwright bought was Surrey Cornfield by William Linnell, painted in 1860. It shows agricultural labourers working and relaxing under a perfect summer sky, children running in and out among the corn stooks. It's a good painting, but it's a fantasy, really, a sort of idyllic country scene, almost too perfect. If you were employing... Ten-year-old children in your factory, though, would you want to come home to pictures of what their real life was like, or would you rather enter this dream world where childhood is still a state of innocence? Pictures like these acted as a comforting reminder of an older, perhaps a more stable, rural world. By the end of the 19th century, British artists had all but abandoned painting Britain's industrial landscape, and the few that did have almost all been forgotten. But the vision of one black country painter does live on in the basement of this building. His pictures are neither comforting nor pretty. And perhaps that's why even today they're left down here. He was called Edwin Butler Bayliss. And we don't know much about him except that his family owned an iron foundry and that he lived all his life in this area. He was, uh, he was called the poet painter of the scarred landscape of Wolverhampton. Here are the pictures, some of them anyway, and you can see the exact opposite of a landscape painter. Where a landscape painter would have had open countryside and trees, he has slag heaps, factory chimneys. Where he might have streams, he's got molten residue coming out of the foundry. It's a gloomy picture everywhere. This one has got a little bit of landscape, a cow, here with its back to us, a white cow. But look behind, instead of mountains, what have we got? A huge slag heap. But you see, for him, this is the same sort of reality. That for a landscape painter, the trees and the streams and the meadows and the mowing of the hay are. And there are still painters today in the black country who find a beauty in the ugliness of industry. What is this? Slag, industrial waste. Turned out probably a blast furnace or a, a foundry of some kind. Is there a lot of this left around? Very little. It's the only, that... it's the only one I've ever come across. Really? Yes, yes. Arthur Lockwood is a local artist, fascinated by the last days of heavy industry in the black country. Lots of artists would um, paint the countryside, woods and hills and 
the sea. Yes. You do something completely different. What, what, what's the appeal? Well, I felt that the black country industry was never recorded. And so I want to catch the, the last of the kind of the industry before it finally disappears. So I go into foundries and uh, other kinds of factories, uh, f uh, nail making factories and things like that, and catch them before they close down. So is it a different nature from the person who would paint the picturesque? I just don't do that kind of painting, so you know, it's never appealed to me. Never fact. ever? You never, no, no. you never paint a sunset or a... No, uh, no, no. no. Oh, I might put a sunset behind an industrial scene to give it a sense of drama, in fact. But uh, no, no. Thank <laughs> you.